This is square root answers and recorded amounts. The first thing that I would ask the student is, uh, looking at our example, I would ask them what is the square root of 55,225? And then I would walk the student through three preliminary steps that are going to be important for the student to use each time they're looking at the square root of a number. The first step is to mark off every two digits, or what we refer to as periods in our radicand. So starting on the right, we're going to count over, one, two, put a tick mark, one, two, another tick mark, and this will tell us how many digits are going to be in our root. So we can count one, two, three periods, which means we'll have three digits in our root. And those three digits are going to be units, tens, and hundreds. The second preliminary step that the students will take is to look at our table of squares to make an estimate for the root number. So if we have 55,225 as our radicand, we can look here and we know as an estimate our root number is going to be greater than 200 but less than 300. The third preliminary step that we take is looking at how many periods we have so that we can determine which guide square that we'll use. We have three digits in our root, so we know that our guide square will be that of the trinomial. This will help the students to recognize what their square will look like when we're finished building it. This can be used just as a guide as we're building the square. So in our first moment, the first step that we're going to take is building the largest square possible with our 10,000 beads. And we have five of those. So we'll bring those down and build the largest square that we can. We can build the two square using four of the beads and we have one left. So we'll record that. We use four of our beads. And we have one left. We'll exchange for 10,000 beads. And from here we're going to start with our arms building out. This would be a place where the students may refer back to the squaring guide. Um, we've started a new color, we're building our arms, and they can follow that on our squaring guide. I've used 12 of my thousand beads. I have two times three, so I have six in one arm and six in my second arm. So out of the 15,000 beads that I had, I used 12. I have three left that I'll be exchanging for 100 beads. We've built out so that our rectangles are two by three, and we have three of our 1,000 beads left that we're going to exchange. We'll exchange one for 10 100 beads. So as I bring down my next digit in the hundreds place, I bring down the two, and that gives me 32, and that matches up with the 3,200 beads that I have in my cup. If I look back at my guide square, I'm going to continue with my square. Now I'll have a square of nine, or three square and I want to record that. I used nine beads, so I have 32 minus nine. I have 23 beads left. The 23 beads left are going to build my arms, or my hundreds times my units. So I'm gonna build those out. And I can remind the students that as I build one arm, the second arm has to match. It has to be identical. 
So I have three beads left. I wouldn't be able to distribute them evenly amongst my arms. So I'm going to exchange the three hundreds. Each hundred bead will get 10, 10 beads. So on my arms, I have used two times five once and two times five twice. So I've used 20 of the 100 beads. So I have 23 minus 20. And that leaves me with three that I will exchange for the 10 beads. If I bring down the tens, which is two, and I have 30 beads that I have exchanged in my blue cup already, I now have 32 10 beads in my cup. If the students want to bring down the guide square again and look, because we have changed colors, we're going to be building our blue arms. As we build our blue arms, it will also be predicting for us what our final square will be. Looks like my arms, each arm is three times five or 15. I have two of the identical arms, so I have used 30 of the beads. I have two beads left in the cup that I will be exchanging. For each 10 bead, I will get 10 unit beads. If I bring down my units place, which is five, and I add that to the unit beads that I've placed in the cup from the exchange, I have 25 unit beads. The student can either refer back to the table of squares, or they can look at the pegboard, and they can predict what they think the square will be. It looks like we'll have a square of 25 or a five square. But they can finish checking their work by laying out their unit beads. And we've used all 25 of our beads, and we have created a five square. In our equation, we have a remainder of zero, and we have zero beads left in our cup. 